Hi, welcome to this introduction for Pop Paper Pro's Anti-Junk. Anti-Junk's primary purpose is to filter your spam and unwanted email out of your inbox, but it can also be used to create rules that can raise your attention to certain email, such as playing a unique sound from a certain sender. I'll start with some of the basic features of the interface and then cover some of the advanced features later in the video. I just received six new messages. Three messages were classified as junk and aren't displayed in the inbox. Of the three visible messages, two were evaluated as legitimate, colored in green, and one is unknown, colored in blue. I'll open one of the good messages to highlight another advantage of anti-junk. When messages are evaluated as legitimate and is from someone in your whitelist, Pop Paper will display the message in full HTML. When you're first starting out with anti-junk, it's important to train the system so that it learns the difference between junk and legitimate messages, so I'll mark this message as legitimate. I'm now going to open this message that Pop Paper wasn't sure if it was good or bad and classified it as unknown. It opened this message in rich text to prevent any negative side effects that opening it in HTML might have. Web of Trust also thinks that this message is questionable and this is a very good indication that this message is most likely phishing and pretending to be from a legitimate business when it's really not. If you want to actively fight spam, you can report this email to various agencies, such as Spam Cop. Again, to train Pop Paper, I'm going to mark this message as junk. This will also mark the message to be deleted. To review the messages that have been evaluated as junk, you can press the Junk View button in the toolbar. The button will be highlighted in yellow whenever you have unread junk messages. The message that I just marked as junk is now listed here and is no longer listed in my main message list. It's a good idea to mark these messages as junk, but for now I'm just going to use the Delete Junk button to quickly get rid of them. Now let's look at some of the advanced features of anti-junk. On the left side of this window, you can see a list of all the filters that Pop Paper uses to make its evaluation. The white list is a list of email addresses and domains that you expect to receive email from. Your address book is automatically included in the white list, so this list will usually contain newsletters, shopping sites, banking, etc. The black list is a list of email addresses that you expect to receive spam or other unwanted email from. In general, it's not recommended that you blacklist every email that's spam because most spammers use a different email address each time. However, it can be useful if there is a specific sender that keeps spamming you, such as unwanted newsletters. Rules are the most flexible and powerful filter available. Not only can rules be used to catch junk or legitimate email, they can also be used for special notifications. The URI blacklist is a very effective way to filter spam. It scans your email for websites and checks if those websites are used in spam by using an online database. Bayesian is a filter that actually learns the difference between junk and legitimate email. Each time you mark a message as either junk or legitimate, you're teaching it and the results will improve. The DNS blacklist is similar to the URI blacklist, except that it checks the IP address of the sender. By default, Pop Paper is very conservative when it detects messages as junk. It will filter the messages from your inbox and it will ignore them so that they won't create a notification. But Pop Paper can do much more than that. You can define what happens to each message based on its evaluation. This window shows the actions that you can define. You can perform actions like delete or hide messages, execute a file, or play a sound. And for IMAP accounts, you can move the message to another folder, which can be especially useful for spam. If you look through the menus, there are additional features available. Under the File menu, you can import and export individual filters, which is useful for sharing rules. Under the Tools menu, there are features such as testing the filters, purge filters that aren't performing very well, and if you have previously saved sample emails, you can use them to train the Bayesian filter. I'll now show how you can set up a rule to play a special notification sound when you receive email from a specific person. First, give the rule a meaningful name. For this example, I will specify that the From header contains tim at example.com. Next, I'm going to define the actions that I want to occur when an email matches this rule. So I select Perform Actions, specify the flag icon, and set a unique sound. I'm also going to set the weight of this rule to negative 1 to ensure that it's not considered junk. Negative values mean legitimate, positive values mean junk. There are some who call me... Tim? Thanks for watching, and please visit the website or email us if you have any questions.